Lesson 11.5, applying the distance and midpoint formulas. We'll get to those in a minute. Um, there's formulas you can use and just plug and chug and make your life easy if you want. But if you actually understand them, you can actually do a lot better. But we'll get to that. There's two real applications of things today. The distance one actually gets applied all the time in the real world. And you look at a map and you say, how far is it between these two points? So we'll just graph them real quick. And yes, we can draw a picture to help us do the math. It's right there. One, two, three, and one. One, two, three, four, five. And five. So how far is it from that point to that point? You might look at it and say, I have no idea. I could guesstimate it and just kind of ballpark it. But what have we been working on? Oh, we've been working on triangles. If I have a right triangle, how do we find the distance? Oh, that's easy. We just take A squared and B squared and find C. Well, we're not going to call it C. We're going to call it D for distance. And A is from 1 to negative 5 is 6 squared. And B is from negative 3 to 5 is 8 squared. And hopefully you know that that is... Going to give us d equals 10. It's a 6, 8, 10 triangle. I have had students who like to draw the graph every time. They don't like to go through the formula. I'll show you in a little bit. They'd rather just graph it. It makes total sense to them. They can actually count off 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 over. And that just works for them. So if it works for you, that's fine. Draw a picture. It really doesn't take that much longer. But. If I take it and draw it into a formula, this is what I get. And what this formula is, is just d squared equals a squared plus b squared. And the a is the distance between the x's and the b is the distance between the y's. Now, take square root of both sides. That's how you get this. Does it matter which x comes first? The answer is no, because if you subtract 1, say you had 1 minus 6, you get negative 5. Or if you went 6 minus 1, you got positive 5. The next step is to square them. So it doesn't matter. They're going to be squared away. You're going to have even, pardon me, positive numbers no matter what. Since there's a plus in the middle, Since there's a plus in the middle, it doesn't matter which comes first, the x's or the y's. So you really can't mess this formula up too badly unless you confuse your x's and y's when you put them in the formula. So this is x1, y1, x2, y2. Distance equals 8 minus negative 2 squared plus 0 minus 3 squared equals 10 squared is 100 plus negative 3 squared is 9, square root of 109, which does not reduce. That's it. Again, if you wanted to draw a triangle, you could find 10 on one side and 3 on the other and do the Pythagorean theorem, whatever works for you. Now, slightly different problem. Sometimes we want to find the halfway point between these two. So again, let's graph it and see what happens. So this is 5, 1. This is negative 7, 3. If I had a guess, I would say it's about here. It's about halfway between those two points. Well, how do we find it precisely? Well, we're finding the average of 5 and negative 7. How do we find the average? We add them together. Divide by 2. 5 plus negative 7 is <clears throat> negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. That is the x value. And the y would be 
3 plus 1, 2. Looks like I did a really crummy job graphing this, well, especially since that's not negative 7, 3. I don't know why somebody didn't yell at me about that. There we go. So, according to the calculation I just did, negative 1, 2, negative 1, 1, 2. Right here is about the midpoint, and it looks like it's about the midpoint from here to here. It's about from here to here. Again, not a perfect graph. And that's it. If you just say the x's or the y's, like I just said, it's the average. And this is how you find average, right here. So, second formula is just plug and chug. Find the midpoint. And this all goes into one formula, but you could do the points separately. You could do the x's and the y's separately if you want. I just put them together. Gets a little busy, but not the end of the world. And we're not always going to get nice even numbers. We will get halves a lot of the time, but no big deal. And now, of course, those two formulas really aren't that complicated. I've got to make your life more complicated than that. So can't have this. So we will put you into the problems differently. This time I give you the midpoint and one of the endpoints. So you have another endpoint. We'll call it E for endpoint. At x1, y1, we need to find that point. So let's write it all out. Negative 6, 4 is equal to x1 plus 1 over 2, y1 plus 1 plus 2 over 2. And break it into two problems because we just got x and we've just got y. Negative 6 equals x1 plus 1 over 2. Multiply both sides by 2. x1 plus 1 equals negative 12. Subtract 1. x1 equals negative 13, which is wrong. No, which is correct. And the other one, 4 equals y1 plus 2 over 2. Multiply both sides by 2. y1 plus 2 equals 8. Track 2 from both sides. y1 equals 6. So there are your points. The end point is negative 13, comma 6. Might want to take a second and look and make sure you got it right. Negative 13 plus 1 is negative 12. Divided by 2 is negative 6. 6 plus 2 is 8. Divided by 2 is 4. Looks good. So you're going to be turning some of these problems around. Generally, they're not that challenging. Just follow the formulas and let them do the work for you and try and understand what's actually going on. That's it. Good luck.